appreciate you being here on this fine Mother's Day. Okay, we're in verse 15 of Genesis chapter 3. The Bible said, and I will put enmity between thee and the woman, between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth uh, children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. He doesn't say anything about abusing. <laughs> and to Adam, he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree which I have commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it, cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns and thistles shall it bring forth to thee. Thou shalt eat the herb of the field. The sweat of thy face thou shalt eat bread. Till thou return unto the ground, for out of it wast thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. And Adam called his wife's name Eve, because she was a mother of all living. Webster <coughs> defines a mother as a person who is female and has children. But we define a mother differently. You look at Eve, and, and uh, I title this message, Can I Be Honest With You and You Still Love Me? I, I told somebody, I texted some of my kids last night, and I said, I'd rather be waterboarded than have to preach on Mother's Day. <laughs> it is so much emotion. <laughs> it's so much stress. Any holiday is hard for me. I don't know how other preachers, there's plenty of material. So I'm going to preach an honest Mother's Day message. And uh, before I do, I want Art to set the tone, as he does every year, and give us a little uh, 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 repeated <laughs> testimony, something about your mother. remember that. I tell you, that, that's something you don't want with not, not just your mother that may be unsaved or, uh, but anybody you care about. Try. You'd be surprised what God would do. And I remember when Casey witnessed to her mother and she was, she was kind of nervous about it. Yeah. And uh, I talked to her a little bit and, and she, she did it. She did a great job. So God will honor that. God will help you. I don't want to, uh, for those of you who, who had the Ideal home life. I'm not putting a damper on that. I, I probably, I think brother, uh, brother Gay, when he was here, he would give a testimony about, about testimony about his mom and how she taught him the Bible. And there's a lot of, a lot of homes like that where you were raised up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. You ought to thank God for that. But uh, you know, a lot of us um, uh, were were in an environment maybe of turmoil. And probably didn't appreciate uh, particularly what our mother did for us till 
later on in life. And so uh, I, I, I'm um, using a, a sort of little humor, but it, it's, it's a little true too. The word mother conjures up for me feelings of guilt, stress, fear, <laughs> despair, worry, and hope. And uh, when we look at, at Eve, I don't know how much thought we've given to this, but when you look at Eve, she uh, is the one, along with Adam, that plunged the whole human race into sin. And she made a choice that probably all of us would have made. Yeah, we would have made eventually, probably sooner than her. And uh, Adam and Eve walk with God in the cool of the day. They were, uh, they were not guilty of sin, not charged with sin. And it was, it was a beautiful life in the garden. And if you think about what it must have been like for Eve to, to make the choice that she made and listen to the uh, serpent. And, of course, God said he put enmity, he cursed the serpent, and he put enmity. And that's, that's Satan. There's an enmity between Satan and, uh, and the woman. And uh, God put a curse on them. Now they've got to... Now they've got something they've never seen before. They've got to work. And they've got their, uh, uh, you know, by the sweat of their face, they're facing thorns. Have you ever had a garden and you go to weed? Why do the, why do the grasses and the weeds in the garden grow so well? <laughs> That's what we should be growing, weeds. They're easy to tend and just uh, root out the vegetables or whatever that you plant. But when we look at Eve, what was her life like? I think her life probably resembled uh, some of us. I, I looked at my mom as a kind of a single mom. My dad was there, but he wasn't uh, always, uh, uh, he was more of the problem than he was the solution. And I, I do feel bad sometimes when I talk about my dad because he, he did do some good things. He was a hard worker. That was all. That was all he cared about was doing a, a good job at work. And, uh, but so much with alcohol and so much turmoil, uh, so much heartache. And there's a lot of people that go through this. We, we got a lot of single moms. We got single dads that are raising kids that are trying to do the work of, of two parents. And uh, they're in our churches. They're in our Society and boy, we want to reach out to them. And I know some uh, some uh, single moms that uh, really are are just uh, knocking it out of the park with their how they're raising their kids and teaching them about the things of God. But I want us to to honestly, as Joel did the other day, with my faults, <laughs> in the sky were parched when he says they couldn't write all the. Uh, that was actually pretty funny, so uh, <clears throat> and true. So when we look at we look at Eve. Can you imagine as she begins to raise a family? She has the two boys, and she they taught them to worship. You see that clearly in the life of Cain and Abel, and you see that sin nature. You know you can you can raise uh, kids up. And you can teach them the right way. It doesn't mean that uh, they're going to follow that. They're free moral agents. They'll make, they make a choice. Uh, but we can at least, they know where to turn. I'm amazed at how many people are in church and faithful to church. And usually it's the ones that were raised up in the house of God. They were taught that. Boy, that's a your, your your mom, your dad, whoever did a great job. If they trained you to uh, to come to the house of God and to be involved in worship and praise and uh, and and being with God's people and hearing the word of God, so Eve has that reputation. How did that affect her? You know, people are the same. They may have different customs, eat different foods, dress differently, 
But relationships have always been the same. Uh, you know, Cain and Abel and that murder. You know, a lot of us grew up with murder in our hearts <laughs> for our brothers. And uh, the, the competition there and the anger there, the, uh, the emotions there. And so she's got to deal with that. She's got to train her kids up and, and teach them how to offer the lamb, the blood sacrifice. There's no other sacrifice. She did that with Cain and Abel, and uh, Cain never accepted that. He said, you know what? I'm the, the, my my uh, farming is so good. My production is so good. I figured out how to fertilize, how to irrigate. And uh, he was so proud of what of the works of his hand. But that's not what salvation is. That's contrary to salvation. And so she taught them the blood sacrifice. Abel got it. Cain didn't. She went through that, that guilt. Do you think if there's any woman that lives in guilt uh, more than, than uh, Eve, who would it be? I mean, can you imagine that? I almost picture her in heaven with her hand up that low. Sorry, guys. Uh, for the uh, for the uh, causing the sin uh, nature to be it that you had to deal with uh, that my bad <laughs> and Adam also so uh, we we look at Eve oh the the, the anxiety she must have had do you think uh, Adam was uh, like uh, some of us husbands you think that Adam ever was in a bad mood one day and said, yeah, yeah, what is it? What do you got? You're, you're bleeding. What is it? Oh, it's a thorn. It's a thorn. I was working out in the garden. Now we've got thorns thanks to you. I mean, that had to have been. They lost that intimacy with God. They lost that beautiful environment in the Garden of Eden. And now they got to work for it. And now it's, you, there's danger everywhere. There's death everywhere. And now they got to die. They didn't have to die before, but now they're going to die. And they get older, and they feel death coming. They feel the pains of life. And just when you think it couldn't get any worse, then one of your sons murders your other son. And they had to keep going. And she had to keep going. You know what she needed? She needed support. From her husband. Listen, if you got a you got a problem, th th listen, this is the most basic doctrine in the Bible. It's even for babes in Christ. You gotta forgive. And you cannot do it uh, easily, and you cannot do it without the power of God. We had somebody uh, years ago from the college and I don't think I gave her a right answer, to be honest, but she was such a sweetheart, and she said, uh, I've got some people that I cannot forgive. And I think I said something like, well, you have to. <laughs> and what I meant was you have to find out a way. It wasn't really a good answer. I should have thought that out more. But imagine her life is not a perfect life. Single mom's not a perfect life. If you got a, if you got a, an abusive husband, uh, it's not a, uh, it, it, it's not a great life, or vice versa. But we're talking about mothers today. So uh, I watched my mom go through what she went through, and I, I, I resented my dad and I resented my mother. Sometimes I resented my mother more than my dad because of the arguing and the. And but the trauma she was trying to raise us kids in, she did a pretty good job. You don't wait till everything is perfect. You don't wait till, till uh, you get all your ducks in a row. You don't wait till things work out. You just don't give up. You never give up. And there's so many examples in the Bible of mothers that just would not give up. Had to deal with issues, but they kept, uh, kept fighting for God. An honest Mother's Day. Uh, what did Eve feel? What did she fear? 
Now she's fearing God in a different way, in a different reverence than she did before. She had to deal with failure. There's nothing worse than failing in front of your children. But I've never done it personally, but I know a lot of you have. We feel that sense of failure. And what do you want to do? You want to give up. But you can't. And you keep that connection. And you, you, you pray for people. You pray for your, uh, for your babies. They're always your babies. I, I talk about my kids like they're, you know, seven or eight years old. And some of them mentally are <laughs> that way. It's, it's really, it's hard. You know, I see Paul, Paul's growing a beard, uh, but it's not a good beard like yours, brother. That's a fine beard. <laughs> it's really sick, it's full. Stand up and show him your beard, would you? <laughs> Stroke it a couple of times. Eat your heart out. <laughs> That's awesome. So, Paul's got gray in his beard. That, of all the things that through my life that gave me the sense that I'm getting older, is when you live long enough to have a son with gray hair, you're just you're about ready to go out. So she she felt pain. She felt fear. She didn't want to fail again. She felt that failure. And she also felt her faith. And nowadays, you know, it used to, I always thought it was rare the stuff I went through when I grew up. But man, it's pretty common with drugs and alcohol and stuff. It's pretty common and it's destructive. But what was it about Eve that you can, you can kind of see, read between the lines and see how she dealt with issues? Number one, a good mom, she's protecting Again, when I think about my mom, I think guilt, stress, fear, despair, worry, and drama. That's the worst sin of all. I never realized my mom and my sister was a drama queen. It was bad enough what was going on, but then suddenly it hit me. I mean, long after I was married and had kids, I was at my mom's house, and I, I, I hadn't been there, you know, Saw her in a while, and she was started talking. I thought, "Oh Lord, I was raised by drama queen. <laughs> I never knew." And then the reality hit me: a mom is protecting. You you kind of become the bad guy when you're the one protecting. You know, no, you can't do that. No, you can't go there. No, I I pick my kids' friends. And I told them, there's, there's people out that's dangerous. And it possibly saved their life. I won't go into details on that, but possibly saved their, their life because of that. We look, we take, it takes time, it takes effort, it takes work, it takes caring. I love to watch the changes that come over people. And with folks here at the church and my family, when they have kids, it's just something. A mom, does so, it triggers something. It's instinctive and it's spiritual. And they love those kids. And they do so much for them. And it, 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 it's, it's such a job. You're giving up part of your life when you're raising kids. Her job was one of, of uh, protecting. Her job was one of providing. A mom's job, you provide for your kids. I, my mom would always tell, take me to Belk's department store. Don't have them out here. There's a reason for it. <laughs> and she would get me the, 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 the newest little clothes, you know. And I'd go to school feeling pretty good about myself. I'd love to go in there because they had children's mannequins. And I would sometimes, I'd get up on a little platform where a mannequin was and I'd do this. <laughs> and people would come by and stare at me for a minute. Maybe reach out and hopefully touch my clothes and that's when I scared the life out of them. <laughs> Providing. 
cooking meals. Now, my wife doesn't cook, but why would you want to cook when you can go right through a drive through and get your heart's desire, Pat? Roast beef, hamburgers, fish sandwiches, french fries, milkshake, the list goes on. I'm just trying to straighten you out. Her job is a job of pro providing. Her job is a job of pondering your future. What my goal with the last two was, and they were so immature, I've never been so terrified in my life. I remember talking to Joel and one of his friends in the front yard. They were uh, young teenagers. I said, listen, guys, and I didn't put it too simplistically, I don't think, for them. But I said, you go work a job, and they give you money <laughs> that you can spend. Any I did. I had that conversation with Joel, one of his friends. And Joel said, wait a minute. Say that again. I said, you work for somebody, you get a skill, and they give you money. He said, huh. <laughs> now, it didn't do him any good, but the other kid turned out pretty good. <laughs> Mom cares about, I, Mama, I was a, you think I'm stupid now. I was an absolute Low mental person. I started school in the, in, when I was seven years old. They delayed me a year. Oh, by the way, before I forget, my mom told everybody I was a genius. <laughs> Seriously. But I was bored with school. I was seven years old. I'd never read a book. I'd never studied. I'd never prepared. They didn't have a preschool or anything like that. And I went in that class. And I could count to nine, I think. <laughs> and the kids in the class got up and they went to the board and they'd say one, two, three. And they would count to a hundred. And I could count to nine. <laughs> and I got to nine and I realized that's all I knew. I'm serious. And so I just went and sat down, and then there was a kid, he wasn't quite right. And he went to the board and he wrote in pencil on the blackboard. I thought, okay, I'm all right. I'm not the last. I'm not the worst. And honestly, I thought in my mind, oh, great, my mom put me in a class full of geniuses. I was in the second grade. I don't like the way y'all looking at me. This is a reflection on, on you. I'm your pastor. <laughs> I was in the second grade. I did not know my ABCs. Shut up. I don't need any comments. Love I was in the second grade. I didn't know my ABCs. And my teacher called me to the front. She was whispering, but I was in front of the class. Right? <laughs> and they're behind me. So she said, Johnny, do you know your ABCs? I said, yes. <laughs> she said, could you say them for me? I said, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P. And I gave her the ABCs. I sang them to her. I saw the pity on her face. <laughs> and I knew then that was my route for getting through school. They would have pity on me. And so when I graduated from high school, it was by the skin of my teeth, barely. And my family, they cheered like I just got a PhD. You have my genetics. <laughs> Always remember that. You're that far from being stupid. I say, why did you say all that to embarrass myself? <laughs> My mom never gave up on me. My mom never gave up. And she helped me with my homework. And she helped me with stuff and writing papers. And she made sure I did my homework. I didn't like homework. I didn't like school. 
A lot of people said, you're not going to amount to anything. And they were right, but <laughs> here I am today, James. I'm famous. I'm on television all over the known county. Before they knew what learning disabilities were, my mom dealt with me. My mom helped me in turmoil. What she did, and she didn't understand the plan of salvation. She got saved later, but she understood right from wrong. And you never got the feeling that she didn't care about us. And even if we were screw-ups, she cared about us. And she loved us. And she found something positive to say about us and to show us. And she gave me hope. She got me going to a Methodist church. Oh. I've told you that story. They got me a little white suit. <laughs> and I wore, I must have wore that thing for five years, I know, because the last time I wore it, it was shorts. <laughs> and they didn't wash it. It was that stayed up look, and I thought I was like new money. I'm saying there's a lot of us that didn't Start out great. But we had a mom that taught us right from wrong. And my mom and I, we had a competition together. I would use her car and I wasn't about to spend my money putting gas in her car that I used. <laughs> so we'd let it run out. I, I ran out, the best one was I ran out going up the driveway. And she had to go get gas and put on. She'd let me run out too. And I'd have to find one of my friends to come bring me gas. Here's the thing about my mom that I remember. This is after I'm grown. I'm grown up, got kids of my own. We go back to her house. There's a big ceiling fan right over the kitchen table. It's a nice one. She's got knickknacks all around the wall of the kitchen. And we had a three-liter Pepsi. Somebody had carbonated it excessively and shook it up, and it's sitting on the table, and I remember the ceiling fans going at high speed. I popped the top of that thing, and there must have been six gallons of Pepsi come out, and it hit that ceiling fan. It was ice cold, and in seconds, the whole wall, every knick-knack, me was covered with sticky, cold Pepsi. It took my breath away. And it hit that fan. It, I mean, you could see it going everywhere. And I just went, oh. it just shocked me that there was that much Pepsi. And I turned around and looked at my mom. i never forget it. She just looked at me and smiled. That's all she did, look at me and smile, walked off. Maybe she's the one that shook it up. <laughs> she cared more about people than she cared about stuff. Some of y'all, you're stuff driven. You'll put people through turmoil uh, because of some little broken, some little knickknack, some little something. Put people before stuff. Eve was a woman that was protecting her family. With the guilt, with the stress, with the despair, she kept going and she provided and she pondered their future. She wanted them to be successful. She wanted them to make it. I'll say of my kids, they have shocked us and surprised us to have such a stupid father, whoever he may be, and yet they turned out pretty good. Steph is making more money than any of them, right? Steph, you're still number one or Joel? If you need money, check with Stephanie. But they got education. Even my son-in-law, even my son-in-law, Paul. He's in construction, and he decided he wanted to do something else. He went back to school. He got his master's. How many master's you got? 
got two or three masters, and now he's two. And now he's doing what he wants to do. He's teaching, and he's good at it. And all of them, he's like one of my kids. We've always been like. Pointing to goals that we should see. You know the greatest thing we can teach our kids? Repent. Admit when you're wrong. Repent. Hey, I'm sorry I did that. I never will forget my brother. We had a rough life. But I remember my brother Mike coming to me and hugging me and saying, I'm sorry. And I'm not, we're not hugging emotional people, so it got both of us crying pretty easily. Lastly, a mother is a preserver. Keeps that integrity of the home. Certain things you don't do. Certain things you don't say. Anybody ever, other than me, ever had your mouth washed out with a bar of soap? Raise your hands. Everybody, keep them up. I saw that, Phil. Good Lord. I thought I was the only one. My mom would run her hand over the soap and... I'm like, and that made me want to cuss more. One thing I could say about a good mom, do the best you can. Teach us right from wrong. You're dealing with your own issues. You're dealing with your own failures, your own inadequacies, but yet you care enough to put the effort out to raise your kids right. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, as we close this service in, in just a minute or two, we pray, God, for all of us, whether we're mothers or, or not, Lord, as Mel Dodd said, a mother is a mother is a mother. And all that that implies and all that that means and all of the effort and the love that's put into raising children, God, thank you for having mothers that tried, mothers that cared, mothers that taught us, Mothers that protected us. And I, I know, Lord, there's a lot of different experiences. Some people had maybe ideal homes, and some of the things I've said are foreign to them. But, Lord, you love us. And you created that, that uh, dynamic of having a mom and a dad to take care of us and to raise us. We thank you for that, Jesus.